Welcome to Gun Run. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Juan Becerra. He is a triathlete with the Dashing Whippets. I'm thrilled that we're gonna learn all about Juan. Thank you, Will. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. For example, tell us where you were born, a little bit about your childhood. Sure, so I was born 42 years ago in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And uh, yeah, so I was into sports at a very early stage in my life. So I started at four years old, I started with judo. And uh, I started competing in peewee tournaments, uh, kindergarten, and uh, then when that phase was over, I started swimming by the age of seven, and I started competing with my school, again, uh, tournaments in Argentina, so I was a competitive swimmer as a kid. Uh, I loved it. And uh, yeah, so I stopped doing that when I became a teenager and I changed uh, the skateboard uh, instead of the pool, of course, kind of a rebel face. And then I started lifting weights, and all of a sudden I became a bodybuilder. What age was that? Around 18 years old. Uh, I was pretty young, but uh, yes, I was winning one of those uh, awkward speedos and uh, with the tan uh, and posing okay. and stuff. But uh, this is Argentina. Yes. So what um, about that culture or your family that led you to be so competitive at such a young age? That's how I was uh, ever since I started. I always wanted to compete and to improve myself. Even at four years old, why I, judo? Because you, did you see a film? Did, was uh, Bruce Lee the your, your was, hero? <laughs> there was a judo place across the street from where I live. So my parents wanted to send me to you know waste some energy uh, somewhere, and uh, that was uh, you know first thing they thought about it, and I loved it. Your parents encouraged you to uh, to yes, go on. Yes, they always encouraged me and uh, to at least to be in sports uh -huh. and yeah, healthy, competitive. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about scholastically? Were you a good student? Elementary school, I was the best student. Yes, I graduated with honors. Uh, so I think I had two Bs in my entire uh, elementary school history. So I was literally best student uh, year after year, okay. with carrying the flag, singing the anthem. Were you very popular? <laughs> I was kind of the popular kid. Uh, in elementary school, yes. You know, you, you're different from most of my guests. Uh, a lot of them were, uh, some of them were basket cases that's going wow. up. Wow. But you're one of the few that did everything right since we were four years old in terms of uh, scholarships, I mean, scholastically. Thank you. Is this because you picked the right parents? And what was your secret? I've always been competitive and I always wanted to uh, improve myself in everything I do. So I wanted to keep studying and you know learn more about certain subjects. I loved history, uh, everything about history. So I was reading a lot. I was reading a lot of geography, science. Interesting. So did you go to college and how did you study there? Yeah, I have a BA in marketing and I went to college in Argentina. And then, then I have an MBA in strategic management, also in Argentina. It's called EDE, which is a business school there. It's one of the best business schools. Okay. Well, it sounds like you spent all your life in Argentina until recently. Until very recently. So. Something must have happened. Oh, yeah. So something happened. Something, ha oh, something happened. Oh, I see. You got married. Yeah. Oh. So after college, you needed to decide a career for yourself. What did you decide? Well, you're going to laugh at this one, but my first job, I was the reptile caretaker at the Buenos Aires Zoo. <laughs> That's funny. Reptile caretaker. Yeah. I That's was, a dangerous job. Yes, it was very dangerous. I, I got bitten many times by all kinds of different animals. Oh, besides the, the reptile, you had to do yeah. other... Oh, yes. How did you apply for that? Did you send in your resume or did you just looking for a warm body? I've always been fascinated by animal life. so. Back then, there were no computers, so I was reading a lot uh, since a little kid. My parents, uh, they were kind of uh, demanding, so uh, comic books were not allowed at home. Uh, so all I had to read were books, and I loved science. So I started collecting uh, small snakes and turtles and lizards, and I started uh, to buy uh, weird animals. Uh, different species uh, mm -hmm. from abroad. 
Oh, oh, really exotic. Exotic. I mean, you know, the controversy now with these trophy animals, but you were getting turtles and... I was getting certified with, you know, legal paperwork, uh -huh. but I was buying them from the zoo. From the zoo? Yeah. So you, you need to get a license for that. And a couple of years later, I knew a lot about reptiles. So the guy told me, look, uh, my guy just quit. So are you interested? And I said, oh my gosh, this is the best thing. Yes. And how old were you? Uh, about 20 years old. 20 years yeah. old, okay. And then what was your next career move after you know being a reptile? That was the best job I had. The best job yes, ever. I loved it. Okay. I lo every day I loved it. Then I was uh, some sort of a Robert De Niro in the movie Casino. So I became a casino manager in one of those steamboats. Okay. I was actually uh, taking care of the high rollers. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was working the VIP rooms. Oh, okay. and uh, so if Donald Trump came by, he would uh, check yeah, you out. Yeah, he never made it, but uh, but yeah. So the local Donald Trumps. I was okay, taking care of those Argentina. guys. Yes. Now, is Argentina considered uh, a rich country, or what's the uh, economics it's, of Donald? It's very divided. Uh, so, you know, there's the middle class is very little. So there's probably 75 to 80 percent of uh, poor people. And uh, and then there are people who are ridiculously rich. Uh, okay, yeah. we're a small middle class, very small. Very small middle class. Okay. Yes. So after casino manager. After casino manager, which was uh, again exciting because I get to learn about the, the casino business, of gambling. And you get to probably wear next tuxedo. I was wearing a tuxedo, yes, sir. Before we go too far. Yeah. You know the James Bond guy is retiring. I think. 42, I think you're the right age. But James Bond is not married. What am I gonna do? So casino manager sounds like another terrific yeah. job. Yeah, it was super exciting. I got to travel to first time in Vegas, get to learn about the business. And then I started doing what I, I'm doing still, which is uh, digital advertising. Uh, that was by the year 2001. Uh, and I didn't know I was a salesperson. There was a salesperson in me, but uh, you know, I got uh, I got auditioned for a sales job for the U.S., but from Argentina uh, in English. So back then, my English was a little rustier than now, uh -huh. but uh, I still I decided to still give it a shot. Uh, I started uh, selling on the phones, almost like a telemarketing job. Oh, really? That's yeah. a really tough job. It's it was a very tough phone. job. Yeah. Uh, cold calling. Cold calling to the U.S. from Argentina. <laughs> selling uh, high-speed internet access. Yeah. <laughs> you must have gotten a few uh, choice words when you from a few people. Ooh, I have many stories, but yes. So, but you know what? That was so helpful to work on my endurance and to be able to deal with frustration. And I blame that job that helped me to build uh, such uh, resistance to frustration that now I apply in sports. Interesting, because you get a lot of negative responses on the uh, cold calling. Yes. I've done a few in my career, and I remember my uh, manager telling me, for every no, I said, yes, coming. <laughs> Did you have a mentor? Yes. Uh, I had someone from the U.S. that was giving me all kinds of advice. But to me, again, being so competitive, I, I used to love when people said no to me, because I knew that was the beginning of my negotiation with them. And as long as they don't hang up on me, I have a chance. So actually, I was excited when people said no, because first of all, they were still on the phones. That was a good sign. That would allow me to start working on my rebuttals. Rebuttal, addressing their objections. Exactly. You are a natural salesperson. Thank you. Okay. At some point, you became a triathlete because that's what you are now with the dashing whippets. Yes. So what's the next major phase of your life that got you closer to the whippets. I was still with the martial arts, uh, so I became a uh, MMA fighter. So I was doing Muay Thai, uh, Jiu Jitsu, and I was fighting locally. Again, never at a pro level, but uh, I was competing. Yeah, broken bones? Uh, 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 only in the hands, a couple of times. And uh, your face knuckles. obviously didn't get too messed up. I think so. Well, unless oh, you were, I used to be very handsome. I was going to say, unless you. Yeah. Were, Dropped it gorgeous back in those days. Exactly. I used to be okay, very Okay, now handsome. you're just gorgeous. Yeah, they ruined okay. me. 
once I started fighting, my uh, boxing manager told me, I need you to lose 20 pounds, so you're gonna start running. So I started running every day. I started with, you know, 1K, the other day 2K, because in Argentina it's everything is in kilometers. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, I was running and I loved it. So I told my manager that I was, you know, quitting. I was no longer training for martial arts and I wanted to become a runner. I was in love with it. I was in love with the culture, everyone being so friendly versus, you know, I was fighting, so everyone was being so aggressive to me. So I liked the running better. And uh, so my boss back then told me, look, I'm running a 5K this Saturday and you're coming with me because I heard that you're running now. I was, uh, okay. She was my boss. And I said, okay, sure, I'm going. So when you were a digital person? Yes. The funny thing is that for my first uh, race ever, it was a 5K, I was so concerned because I read something about getting dehydrated. So I bought a huge Camelback and I filled it with you know water. I drank the whole thing during the 5K which of course it was super slow. You know, I, I started like a five minute mile and that lasted for like a quarter mile and then I started like nine minute miles instead. Uh, but I loved it. The energy, the people, so the music, the finish line, so exciting. And I decided to become a runner. So I signed up for a 10K and then the natural progression came, like 10K, half marathons. Everything in Argentina. Uh, I've done New York City Marathon in 2008, New York City Half Marathon also the same year. So I was flying from Argentina as a tourist. Since my early years, I used to watch a TV show in Argentina with my dad where they were showing the Kona Ironman. Back in the 80s, there was two guys, uh, Mark Allen and uh, Dave Scott. They were doing something they called the Iron War. And I remember, I was like, those guys are superheroes. Like they're running like that after you know, cycling, oh my gosh. Over 100 miles, a swimming a mile. That was crazy. And then I heard, wait a minute, you know, I would like to run a marathon, but what's next? I never heard of ultra marathons, but I heard about the triathlon. I said, what's that? And then I remembered. I said, wait, wait, I gotta do Nine that. Hours. So by the time I decided to start doing triathlons, I already had around six or seven marathons in me. So I felt confident and said, well, maybe you know, it's time to, to go to the next thing. So long story short, I found uh, someone that didn't consider that I was you know, doing a su suicide mission because uh, I wanted to sign up for an Ironman five months uh, from that day. So it was kind of risky. Uh, I had no bike, no, no swim experience in open water. I started training, I uh -huh. got a bike, and five months after that, for me, it was love at first sight. Uh, it was Ironman Brazil. Ironman Brazil. Yeah, Ironman and Brazil. And what was your time for your first Ironman? It was uh, 12 hours and 35 minutes. Well, that's an outstanding time. For, it was, it was a good time. Even for a veteran. It was a good time for a debut, and, but I loved it. Love seems to be a common theme in your life here. How did you discover the Dashing Whippets? How did you come to spend time now in, in New York? Running gave me a lot of friends. Uh, by then, I was working in Microsoft. I met this guy, uh, I created the Microsoft running team in Argentina, and then uh, because I traveled to the States and asked permission to HR for to be sponsored on races and clothes, etc. So I met this guy, he used to date uh, my wife, we used to work together with this guy, and he told me, look, you're going to New York all the time, so why don't you get in touch with her? She lives there, she's Argentinian, and she's a marathoner. Well, who was that? Elizabeth Maiolo, I think oh. she's been on your show twice. The last time was the great Dr. Dan Hamner. Yes, Yes. exactly. So I, I added on Facebook, but uh, you know, we chatted a couple of times and that Still was it. Facebook. Yeah, so that was in 2008. December 2013, I was at a race registration, waiting uh, to get the t-shirt, and all of a sudden, I saw Elizabeth walking by. It was the first time I saw it in person. I never called her or ran with her or anything every time I came here to New York. By then I was already divorced. So I told her, are you Elizabeth? And she was like, what are you talking in English? We're in Argentina. I'm like, where do I know you from? I was like, you know, approaching her like, hey, how are you? And uh, we dated twice in Argentina. She had to come back to the US. Uh, I had a half Ironman in Chile uh, but I promised that I will come visit. So 
I came here to the U.S. five weeks after that. What year was that again? 2008? 2013. 13, okay. Yeah. Between 2008 and 2013, we, I barely liked her pictures or she liked mine, but that was it. That was okay, all the interaction. Okay, so it wasn't love at first sight. This uh, is one of the few times it wasn't love right away. It was when I saw it in person, in though. In person, when you saw her walk by yes. said Elizabeth. Yeah. To you, it was yes. ding, 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 ding. We went out a couple of times, and, but nothing happened. Uh, so she came back to the U.S., but, uh, you know, we started talking like three or four hours a day on Skype. Oh, uh, okay, that's a big clue. And I knew that was a sign. Okay. So I said, look, I'm going. <laughs> You're uh, going to New York? Yes. So I flew to New York for a week, but I ended up staying two weeks instead. After those two weeks, I knew that somehow I wanted to, you know, give it a try. Uh, Make it a more permanent arrangement. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if it's going to be in Argentina or in the U.S. because back then I barely had a uh, tourist visa, so it wasn't easy for me to stay in the U.S., of course. Plus, I had my entire life in Argentina. Uh, I had a business uh, by then, so I had an uh, Apple tech support center uh, in Argentina. I was doing pretty good. So I flew here and I said, look, I think I can get rid of everything. Moved here, I can get a student's visa or some kind of visa. All of a sudden, there was no visa. Uh, so we jumped onto Plan B. <laughs> get married. So we got married uh, six months after I moved uh, to the U.S., which is seven and a half months after we met. Okay. It's probably a personal best for, uh, for you that was a, That was a PR, absolutely. When he was here, in that chair, I think maybe during the first show, she said she was never going to get married. I know. She told me the same thing. Really? Yeah. But you're the salesman. Yes. We wanted to stay together. Okay. Uh, it was mutual. Uh, but uh, the only choice would be either we get married or we go to Argentina. We to both wanted to stay here. Okay. Yeah. Her life was here now. Yeah. And mine too. Okay. Now it is. Yeah. Of course, she's always been very active in the Dashing Whippets. Okay. And well, I, I had to join them, right? Uh, I had no other choice. And through them and through Elizabeth, I met you know, a lot of awesome athletes, uh, people who I really admire. Uh, I never thought that I would meet in person people uh, like uh, Boston Billy, uh, you know, Alberto Salazar, uh, the Hoyts, people that I only saw on TV from Argentina. For me, it was, it was amazing. And uh, running in Central Park, and now I live here, and uh, I get to see the super fast athletes and Mev, and you know, hey Mev. You on first name basis now with Mev? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're buddies. Okay. I am so excited to, uh, not only to have the possibility of uh, sharing the park and the city with such awesome runners and be inspired, not only by the running culture that this country has, but the racing uh, environment, uh, the technology, uh, the access to things that uh, sometimes uh, you know people might take for granted, like uh, tech clothes and uh, you know running shoes like Asics or technical running shoes. Many brands you don't get that in Argentina unless you travel. Uh -huh. So having access to all those things. Uh, you know, it's it's really amazing for me. It, it is amazing because I remember again Elizabeth saying that she had like too many shoes. You know what? I get a lot of free shoes from her ah. uh, because first of all, we have the same shoe size. Weird. Really? Super weird. Nine and a half. We're both nine and a half. Oh my gosh. So sometimes we share shoes, which is super <laughs> cool for me as a guy because uh, you know she gets uh, all kinds of shoes because of her blog, runningindecity.com. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. So sometimes I inherit shoes, okay. or sometimes I get shoes just because I am uh, Mr. Maiolo. <laughs> well, you're going to have to start your own blog or something, but you seem to be a natural. Like I said, you could be the next uh, James Bond. You seem to have all the thank right you. credentials. Thank you, thank you. You had a, a bad incident at Central Park a Ouch. couple of times where you hurt yourself. But tell us about that story. So. I had my new bike, riding my bike in Central Park on the east side, and uh, I know the speed limit is 25, so I was pushing like 24-ish. I was going pretty fast uh, through Engineer's Gate, and when the turn comes to the left, all of a sudden, uh, 
I saw a guy and I recognized that he was a triathlete because, you know, we see each other. So he had a visor. And I was like, hmm, a triathlete. So I looked at him. Uh, he's he fast? Is, you know, what's he doing? Was and, he on a bike? I mean, was he just uh, no, he was running, actually. Right. He was running in the opposite direction. But I saw that he looked at me. He did like like this, and, and then he looked behind him. So by the time I said, like, something must be going on, and by the time I looked at the front, there was this dog. So I tried to move the bike. And you see those scenarios where you try to ditch someone and, you know, you, you kind of uh, do the same movement. The dog, uh, that's what happened to the dog. He did the same movement. Yeah, so I am a huge duck person. So in a split second, I made the decision that I was not ready to uh, hit the dog. But I'm, unfortunately, I, I hit the dog, uh, I hit on the brakes. The dog was okay. That was my first concern. I didn't know I was hurt back then. So there was actually a patrol car chasing me. They were so ready to give me a ticket because I was pushing 24-ish. Somehow I convinced them that I was okay because I felt okay. So I got up and I rode my bike back home. I felt in pain, but again, uh, running and triathlon, they give you, you know, uh, a lot of uh, pain, pain, pain endurance. Yeah. So, you know, okay, so I really hurt myself, but I didn't know I was broken. And then I started to feel dizzy, and I, when I looked at the mirror, my arm, my, my right arm was like, you know, below my knee. I was like, uh-oh, and I had no bone here. So I said, okay, so maybe this is bad. I woke her up. We went to the hospital, Mount Sinai, uh -huh. and there was a whippet there, actually, in the ER. So she took care of me. After a couple of x-rays, I learned that I, I had my left hand broken and my collarbone broken in three parts. So I think you definitely ready for that James Bond movie. You're indestructible. You don't even know you're in, uh, in hurt. Well. I think I'll be more ready for uh, a Wolverine movie because now I have titanium inserts. Oh, so oh. I don't think Hugh Jackman's ready to retire yet. So maybe. Maybe. Did the dark owner or did they know that you went through this agony in saving? No, to save that dog? no, because I was so concerned. I heard uh, many stories about you know if you call an ambulance, they won't take your bike with you. And so, oh, that was one of the reasons you wanted to... I wanted to go home. I was like, a, you know, less than a mile uh, away from home. I wanted just to get on my get bike and, yeah, and go because home. Because you were worried that your bike might uh, stay my behind. My bike, of course. An exp expensive bike, probably. Yeah, but, the, you Interesting. know... For, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What are some of your uh, future challenges that you have, both athletically speaking? Is there a, uh, a, uh, an event that you're looking forward to? Yes. New York City Marathon. The one that's coming up? Yes. Yes, I am very excited. My biggest challenge is Elizabeth calls me One Speed One. Uh, so my biggest challenge is to learn how to pace myself better. I race, I am an, an emotional racer. So I race uh, very emotionally. So usually I tend to go really fast at the beginning and I fade a lot oh. at the end. So, okay, and this is, this is not your first rodeo you've done the marathon. I have a lot of experience fading at the end, okay. let me put it that way. Okay, well, you know what they say, if you, if you repeat it the same way as before, you're going to get the same results. Yes. A definition of crazy. So don't be crazy. I won't. And uh, actually, I think, uh, you know, by uh, running with Elizabeth and uh, many whippets, I learned how to pace myself better. So I'm not there yet but I got a lot better, so. Well, you know, you're probably trying to do a sub four. I'm sure there's a pace, they have pacers, so you can follow them for a while. I think pacing, uh, yeah, having pacers is cheating. I don't know if this is going to get me in you trouble. Really, you, don't, but, uh, uh, you don't believe in, in pacing. Well, you're not a professional. They just got rid of it. Yeah. The, what are they called, rabbits from the uh, majors. Chicago Marathon as well. I yeah, heard that, yeah. yeah that's... But this is not the same thing as a rabbit. This is helping you control yourself. But you know what I love? I love uh, the challenge of doing the race with my head. And uh, the challenge of, you know, part of the challenge is learn how to pace yourself better. Uh -huh, or, uh -huh. And that's the really nice thing about the marathon distance. Okay. You yeah, need it to is be, a tough distance. You need to be really uh, good with your strategy. That's or true. Or else. That's true. Do you, do you have a goal tie for this? I would like to be anything under 330. Uh, hopefully that will happen. We'll would see. Would that be a, a Boston qualifier for you? Uh, I don't think I'm going to see a BQ this year. Uh, 
but uh, that's what I'm, I'm going to be looking for for next year because if I ever want to make it to Kona, uh, that's my main goal. I would, like, I would love to qualify for the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii sometime. Uh, everyone tells me that uh, I need to BQ first, and that's going to be the first indicator that you are going to have a great marathon on any Ironman. So. Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, I wish you great success. And then, Thank you. professionally speaking, you're, you're a digital advertiser, a digital yes. salesman, and you know Microsoft products, you're a natural salesperson. What's, uh, what's new and exciting in that in terms professionally? Uh, and so I started from scratch when I moved here, and I knew that, so I had to start uh, you know, from the very beginning. So I started as a regular salesperson, and uh, now I became a regional director. So now I'm in charge of the entire Eastern Seaboard. Or what company? Uh, it's a company called Chuzol, which is a programmatic advertising product. Yeah. Regional director, huh? Yeah, I'm very happy. And you get to travel the region. I get to travel a lot, yes. Wow, your passport must be uh, very full. Uh, yes, yes. Well, listen, on that note, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Will.